With all the trade rumors surrounding the Montreal Canadiens right now, one insider links them to the Anaheim Ducks, but no, it's not for the player that you might be thinking of. We have to dive into that potential trade. Plus, the Habs make a quite frankly shocking lineup change before next game, and insider Craig Button has a very interesting take on what he thinks the Habs should be doing in the short term, so stick around for all of that on this episode of Habs Digest. But before we get into the video, guys... A reminder that over half of you guys watching this video are not subscribed. I haven't asked you in a while, but hey, I'd really appreciate if you haven't hit that button. Just check down below. Is it red? If it's if it's still red, click the button. Subscribe. We got daily Habs content. This is your home for it. Let's try and get to 11,000 subscribers. Let's move into the first topic. Now, I want to talk a bit about Craig Button. Now, Craig Button, he's uh, he's had some really positive opinions of the Habs, some really negative opinions of the Habs. We know he loves Lane Hudson and all this stuff, but uh, he was asked on a, on a recent show with Mike Johnson kind of saying, going back and forth a bit on what the Habs' plan should be. And it's this segment on TSN that is called One Big Question. They did a bunch of different teams in these today. But the Habs section, they kind of talked about, well, with a wealth of picks and young players like Slav, Gouli, Monty, proving they're good NHL players, it's is the time now for the Habs to shift their focus from rebuilding to winning, Mike Johnson and Craig Button discuss. And essentially what they came to the conclusion of was, yeah, it's time to start buying in. Greg Button especially was like, the time is now to get rid of your prospects. Start getting some guys that you truly believe are the star talent, the guys that are going to be with you for the long haul, the guys that are going to help you get into that contention window. And one of his main reasons was just look at their draft picks. I'll bring them up down below here. Take a look at the Habs draft picks. That's 30 draft picks over the next three drafts. And just look at those th like first three rounds. Two first rounders this year, two first rounders next year. Now it's the Calgary one from the Monaghan trade. Then you got a second rounder this year, two next year, two thirds this year. Two you can't feasibly draft a player at each one of those and expect them all to be in your system and develop properly. No, that just doesn't happen. Something has to give. Eventually, the picks have to start going. And I think we're seeing a lot now with Kent Hughes and his ideologies. Like, this might be the last time that we really have a chance to sell big on some guys. We still got Tanner Pearson on an expiring contract. We got someone like Yoel Armia who might fetch something. Of course, Jake Allen. We got some other potential ways to get picks uh, that we will get into later in the video. Make sure you stick around for that. But yeah, their, their point is basically, why not now? Why not start buying in? Why not make the playoffs next year? The point he basically said, let's try and get the Habs to be a competitive team next year. And honestly, I'm on board with that. I'm on board with letting the guys try and win, try and play meaningful games starting next year, bring in some big time talent if available and try and make that push for the playoffs. Now the transition is working well. I know Slav, Doc, Caulfield, Suzuki, they're all still young. But like they mentioned in this clip, the last thing you want to do is have Suzuki and Caulfield start to get to their you know mid-later 20s as you're getting those really stars who are starting to emerge. We know that's kind of going to happen with Slav's timeline. That is what it is. But if you can get some other guys now who can help compete right now, why not do it? I think it's a good idea. I'm not going to spend too much more time on this because it's kind of just a philosophy thing. But let me know down below. What do you guys think is the time now, if not at this trade deadline, this offseason, to really go all in, try and make moves with some of your draft picks, try and go out and get some of the best players you can? Because I think it just might be. Let's move on to the second topic of the video. And uh, this annoyed me. Um, look, the Habs lineup has been in a bit of turmoil for the last... Well, you know, I feel like I'm running out of running out of hands to count on sometimes with how how many years the Habs have had some kind of lineup turmoil. But right now we know the injuries to Kirby Doc that hurts. You know, Rafael Bernard is out. You're still going to have some some shuffling of the lines. But I thought that the last few games the Habs have looked like they've had some really solid lines out there, especially the first line, obviously. But one line I really thought was working well was Joshua Wah with Alex Newhook and Yoel Armia. Now, obviously, Wah was with Monaghan before he got traded. Shout out to Monaghan for the natural hat trick in the first period for the Jets. Shout out to you, Monaghan. Love you. But um, that line with Wah, Newhook, and Armia looked really, really good. It got a goal, right? And I think back-to-back -back games. But look what the Habs did today. So Ullin and Caulfield was a maintenance day, treatment day. Fair enough. It might just be for his shoulder, might be scheduled. I'm not sure. Players have those all the time. But Wa, Newhook, and Josh Anderson. Now, again, as you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, we're not Josh Anderson haters. Like, yeah, look, I understand Josh Anderson has been dragging his teammates down more often than not. His point production has not where we've wanted it. It's not been where we've wanted it to be. His contract is an albatross for his production. Can't deny any of that. I still hope he can turn it around, right? I'm not a super, but at this point now, 
my question is why? Why, Marty, would you switch a lineup that looked really good? No, because Armia was the extra attacker in the last game. He played so well with that line that he earned a spot as an extra attacker when the Habs pulled their goalie. And they asked Marty about it. He said, well, it's good to create competition. Good to get other guys wanting that spot. And because they asked him, hey, well, do you think Armia out there is going to create? The... It was Armia. He played so well, he deserved it. Joshua Watt has been playing phenomenal. New hook since he's been back has been great. That line together showed incredible chemistry. But now we got Josh Anderson there. And maybe it's just to see a new look. Maybe maybe they think it's a sort of a reverse thing here, right? We said Joshua Wav really benefit playing with someone like Newhook and Armia, who's quite skilled. Maybe what they're trying to do is get Wav, who has shown some real, a real knack as a playmaker, and Newhook, who's been playing some of his best hockey um, in a Montreal Canadiens jersey since he's been back, obviously, because, you know, he really hasn't been with the team for long. And then bring Josh Anderson in with them. Because don't forget, in the preseason, Anderson and Newhook were a great dynamic duo. But once it was tried in the regular season, even in the small sample size, it didn't look as amazing. They tried it with Slav, didn't really work. But here's hoping they can get some of that chemistry back. Maybe Marty sees this as Joshua and Alex Newhook really good together. Newhook and Anderson were really good together. Let's try and put this all into one. And Yoel Armia, you're kind of the odd one out. Now I know there's some... Uh, some ups and downs with Yol Armia. I know there's some uh, diverse opinions, shall we say, about him throughout the fan base, but I think he's been playing really well. Is he worth his $3.5 million cap hit? No, I don't think so, but I think his skill has really fit in well for the Montreal Canadiens, and he's been playing some of his best hockey ever since he came back up from the Val. So what do you think of this line change? Because I don't like it, personally. I might understand a bit of the psychology behind it, but I just don't see how you can go from rewarding a guy like Armia, who was the extra attacker, into sending him down a line and promoting Josh Anderson, the guy who has four points in the calendar year of 2024. I don't know. It's a bit interesting to me. Don't necessarily agree. I'd love to hear your opinion down below. The final topic. I want to talk about this. And it kind of makes a lot of sense. Now, I'm going to get into this here. As we know, as we're heading into the trade deadline, a lot of people are talking about the Habs making a lot of moves. Of course, us here at Habs Digest, we talk about it all the time because well, something's going to happen. There's no way something doesn't happen, right? I'm going to knock on wood right now just to make sure. But one of the big things that we've been talking about, of course, is the Jake Allen trade, the maybe David Sava, maybe Tanner Pearson, maybe Yol Armia. But what we've been talking about maybe a little more recently, since those talks have sort of died down in a lot of ways, minus that Jake Allen trade scare a couple days ago, is the fact that the Habs can be a broker. Now, we talked a bit about Jake Gensel a couple of videos ago, and actually he was outlined in this article I'm going to show you uh, today as well. But him, along with another player, were mentioned as a guy that the Habs could maybe offer to broker in a deal, essentially retaining some salary for some extra compensation. So I'll, I'll break it down for you. Let's let's not waste any time. So Marco D'Amico, always writing some great articles at Montreal Hockey Now, trade deadline cap broker targets for the Montreal Canadiens. Now we mentioned Jake Gensel in this, as we mentioned in uh, I think a few videos ago. So go check out that video if you haven't already. But one player he mentioned was Adam Henrique. Adam Henrique's making $5.825 million this year, and as Marco points out, he's the last top nine center available on the rental market that could realistically make a difference on a contending team, but it's a big price tag. And he said even if the Ducks retain 50%, that's basically $3 million that a contending team would have to try and fit under the cap, and that's not that feasible. But what might be more feasible is if Anaheim retains 50%, and then Montreal steps in and says, hey, I can also retain 50% on top of that to give him a more affordable $1.46 million. It'd be far more feasible for virtually any contending team to fit him under the cap. And at $1.5 million, the Canadians could demand quite a fair return for that. And D'Amico kind of suggests maybe a third or fourth round pick. Now, I don't think it's that bad of an idea. Again, though, when we're talking about salary retention, there's a lot of pros and cons to that because the pro is you can get draft compensation for doing essentially nothing if you're not gonna spend that money anyway you're basically getting a draft pick for free in essence great that's awesome the downside is that would be montreal's third retention spot and if you've been watching the channel for a while you know we talk about this third and final retention spot a lot because right now joel edmondson is still in one of those retention spots his expires after this year and we're also retaining half on jeff petrie for this year and next season so heading into next season the habs will have two spots available but right now there's only one left so what is the problem with that well the problem with that is if you want to move jake allen a lot of teams can't fit his two more years at about 3.8 per season under their cap without some form of retention so if montreal wants to move jake allen either they would have to source out another team that could broker a Jake Allen trade, or they would have to use that retention spot themselves almost certainly. 
Now, Ken Hughes has been no stranger to say, hey, I don't mind waiting till the offseason to, to kind of trade Jake Allen. It's not needed right away, but a lot of Habs fans are a little impatient. I mean, my, myself included, I'd love to just see it go back to a two-goalie rotation. It's a very interesting situation, but I think retaining on Adam Henrique makes a lot of sense because ever since Sean Monaghan was off the market and Elias, um, Elias Lindholm, I almost said Pedersen, his Lindholm, not a whole lot of centers out there. Henrique has a proven track record. He has many, many 20-goal seasons Yes, his cap hit is big, but if this little retention game can be played between the Ducks and the Canadians, I think it could make a lot of sense for Montreal to get a draft pick, especially since what they'd get from a Henrik retention would probably be more than what they'd get for trading Jake Allen. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below if you think Adam Henrik is a good target for the Montreal Canadiens to retain on. I'd love to hear from you. That'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Help us reach 11,000 subs because we are under 200 subs away. I've been your host, Josh Goss. We'll catch you in the next one.